Christopher Street is like our mother. It was the haven. We were safe at the pier. Outside the village, you could get gay bashed, murdered, beat up. HIV AIDS hit the housing ball community really hard. I was living with HIV for a couple of years now at that time. I was like, hey, you know, I'm living with AIDS, you know, I have HIV. People were really shocked. They were like, why is this kid doing that? And why would he put all his business out there? Because it was really a secret. This is Luna Ortiz. In 1986, at just 14 years old, Luna Ortiz found out he was HIV positive. He took what could have been devastating, crippling news and instead embraced his diagnosis. Luna rose to the top of the New York City house and ball scene in the late 80s and became an inspiration for a community suffering from an epidemic. He worked tirelessly to push past the stigma within the ballroom scene and help organize the annual Gay Men's Health Crisis Latex Ball, a competition that also spotlights HIV education. Through this intersection of creative expression and activism, Luna Ortiz continues to inform, empower, and spark conversations to end the stigma around the virus. I'm Javier Munoz, and this isn't just our history. This is legendary. When I started going to the village uh, to hang out, because that was like where we all went, it was where all young black and Latin and brown folks would go. You know, in our neighborhoods, the Bronx, Brooklyn, or uptown Manhattan, you couldn't be as flamboyant. You couldn't carry on and, you know, show yourself. Um, some of us would be like this on the subway until we got on the Christopher Street next hour. We're like <laughs> antsy to get off so we could see our friends. It was just fun times. And this is like, again, the 80s, uh, early 90s. A lot of young LGBT people were being kicked out of their homes. And so the houses were there as the support system. Instead of living in the streets, sometimes they would live with their house parents, either mother or father. The house, which is your family, I look at it like a team, because although you're a family, you're still a team, because you gotta go out and compete. They get you prepared, almost like the coach. So the mother and the father are the coach, and they're preparing you for competition. In our heads when we're walking, Everybody's cheering, but you're thinking, okay, I am right now, I'm Cindy Crawford and I am walking. I wanted to like wear feathers and beads. <laughs> but within that, it's still the family structure. We're the children, we listen to the parents. You need to finish school. You need to get a job if you're not doing anything. You shouldn't be hanging out at the pier all night. <laughs> That's what a good parent does, and, and a house really just supports you and kind of builds you up. They say the first house was the House of La Beja. Crystal La Beja was the mother. She started creating the House of La Beja because she felt she was treated unfair uh, because she was of color, and it was in a world of, of other white queens that were in the pageant. And so she said, I'm gonna do like the House of Chanel did in, you know, in Paris, and you know, start like, you know, that sort of fashion house name. Me being the new kid on the block, you know, the La Beijas were trying to get me, the Pendovices were trying to get me, and that turned into a, you know, a battle of like, we gotta get this new kid in the block. The house that I went to visit and, and I was accepted was the house of Pendovis. I remember when I went into Avis Pendovis' house, she said, she's the mother of the house of office, and she said, August, go say hello to your sister in the next room. We went to the bedroom next door and there laid, you know, a house member, one of her daughters who was dying of AIDS. And this is at a time where um, hospitals were horrible. They would leave the food outside. HIV AIDS hit the housing ball community really hard. Everybody was sort of quiet, not really talking about what's actually happening. People were afraid to hug each other. It was horrible. I was living with HIV for a couple of years now at that time. I was like, hey, you know, I'm living with AIDS, you know, I have HIV. People were really shocked. They were like, why is this kid doing that? And why would he put all his business out there? Because it was really a secret. Mind you, there was people really going through it. Like you could see HIV destroying their body. And, but they were the first to be like, why is he doing that? People were so offended at times. 
But then there were people like Avis and Hector Extravaganza who were like, I love what you're doing. And so within ballroom, I started to sort of, you know, talk individually to people. People were like, what could we do? We, you know, we need handouts and condoms. We need things happening, like, come on. So the houses came to Gay Men's Health Crisis. GMAC was the only agency at the time that was doing sort of the work and really invested in, in, in prevention and helping people. And that's why the House of Latex project would be born. If it wasn't for the work that GMAC was doing helping people, I think a lot more of us would have became infected and or would have died because we didn't have no support whatsoever. They would train them about HIV and AIDS 101. How do you get it? How you could hug people? It's transmitted this way, this way, this way. Information that we know now. But also support. Are you hungry? Your house could come here, have groups and meetings. That's what was so beautiful about being a part of a house. Besides the competition, for me it was personal. It was, it was what we were doing outside of the ball that excited me. We talked to kids that were like seven, eight years old, and then they had these amazing questions like, are you afraid of, you know, to die? And I'm like, oh my God, this eight-year-old is asking me, am I afraid to die, you know? And so it was really intense. But at the end of it, they always used to come up and give me these beautiful hugs. So little things like that stay in my memory for, it makes me feel, you know, like I helped do something. The latex ball was our sort of memorial in a way. It was where we celebrated each other. And you would look at everybody and everybody's like in the audience like in white. It was so beautiful. It was like angels on earth. It's not just a ball. It's basically a community event. It's a health fair. It's a perfect place to have togetherness and mourning while the ball is going on. Because we're celebrating each other. Hi everyone. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Legendary. If you want more, check out the full Legendary playlist and be sure to subscribe to Now This Entertainment. See you next time.